Okay, so we will be in this next session with uh, a presentation from Takaya Shoko on historical nature in Nishida and Kimura Motomori. So, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Takaya, uh, Graduate School of Education, Kyoto University. So first of all, I thank to the organizers for so, so scheduling, me, scheduling me here because my presentation is Cross, in close connection with uh, technology and the environment. So the previous session is quite uh, close to my contents. So my presentation is Historical Nature in Nishida and Kimura Motomori, Nature, Culture and Education in Harmony and Struggle. So introduction, nature in Nishida philosophy is a debatable concept. For example, Heizik argues that nature is a missing basho in Nishida philosophy while Davis indicates that later Nishida proposes the concept of historical nature, Rekishite Kishizen, and the concept of historical nature inspired Kimura Motomori, one of Nishida's disciples, during Kimura's turn from philosophy and aesthetic to pedagogy. So leading question, can we find clues for facing environmental problems in Nishida's and Kimura's thinking on historical nature and human actions? So let us start with Nishida. So in the logic of place, the natural world is the first place that must be deepened into the second place, the world of consciousness. And Nishida argues that nature is inset in history, but not vice versa. And the second world of consciousness must be deepened into the third world, the numeral world. So Nishida argues here, the true self does not live and die in the world of history but lives in the nubunal world. And the numeral world is opened to the place of absolute nothingness. So the natural world is the shallowest place in the logical place. However, later Nishida turns to the historical world. So now Nishida writes, the immediate and concrete world to us is historical. The individual self is a historical being and lives and dies in that historical world. So here is Nishida's own diagram. So the previous three words are condensed into one historical word. And this historical word, it inset in the absolute nothingness. And this Nishida's turn to the historical words corresponds to the, the other member of the Kyoto school, like Tanabe and Tosaka. So Nishida proposed the concept of historical nature in this context. So here we arrive at Nishida's concept of historical nature. So in the, in the identity and continuity of the world, Nishida writes, the true subject of history is something that is always present as present of eternal now. This present can be conceived as the natural ground of history, that, it, that is historical nature. And he also writes, the true concept of nature is that things are born from the present, I think that natura in Latin and Pusis in Greece meant that the idea that nature is mere necessity should be attributed to modern science. So we summarize Nishida's concept of historical nature designates the creative ground of history and contrasted to the nature as mere necessity in modern science. And this historical nature is in connection with human actions. In Logic and Five, Nishida explicates our actions in terms of the body, tool, and art, or technology. So art and technology are the translation of the same Japanese word, gijutsu. So Nishida starts with the proposition that the human being is the animal that makes the tool. So we make the tool with the body, but we also understand the body in an analogical way with the tool. So here Nishida admires, it is already artistic that our eyes see things. It is an art of historical nature. The movements of the skeleton consist of those of levers, hinges, and spirals. The eyes are akin to dark rooms. In addition, these are natural movements. Nature is a skillful artisan. We can never do anything but through the art of nature. 
So historical nature makes the body as a two, and we understand the body as a two. So here we summarize Nishida's concept of historical nature. So the creativity of historical nature works in two ways. So historical nature makes the body, and with the body, we act. And through our actions, things are born on the one hand, and knowledge is born on the other hand. So one creativity is we act and make things, and the other creativity is that we act and we produce knowledge of our bodies. So the historical nature is natural because its creativity precedes any of our creativity and actions, but the result is historical. So things and knowledge are born into the historical world. So all the process of creativity is inset in historical nature. So here we ask to Nishida, if it is historical nature that makes possible human actions, how can the human being act destructively to nature? Does historical nature destroy itself? So now we bracket this question for the time being and move on to Kimura. So Kimura started with philosophy and aesthetic, but not satisfied with German idealism. For example, Kimura criticizes fifties evaluation of nature as mere non-self or an obstacle or the material or substantial holder for human expressions. Yet, uh, Kimura argues here on the fourth line, yet doesn't nature rather nurture human beings? Is it not just an obstacle, but what encourages the activities of life, invites, makes suggestion to, enlightens, and even coaches human beings? Is it not the mother earth that bears and raises culture for human practices, as well as for all the other living things. So Kimura's nature as the mother earth here resonates with Nishida's historical nature. Kimura was inspired with Nishida's concept of historical nature and makes a short, made a short lecture on this concept. And this concept of historical nature inspired Kimura, and Kimura elaborated his core concept of expression. So expression is not that, is not to mere pulling out the inner on the outer, but now expression is the activity of expressive life as a whole. And this expressive life has the inner and the outer as its two elements. So the outer is not mere material, but expressive environment that in itself talks to the inner. And the inner is the expressive subject that responds to the outer. So there is interactions between the inner and the outer. And the whole process of interaction is called the activity of expressive life and largely ident identified with historical nature. So the expressive subject is only part of the activity of expressive life as a whole. However, Kimura emphasizes that the subject has its own freedom because it's self-aware. So the subject conceives an idea to express and it can deny the idea and choose not to express, but it finally denies the possibility of denial and finally affirms the idea to express it. So this process of double negation makes the subject self-aware. So Kimura argues that here is an asymmetrical tension between the expressive subject and the whole activity of expressive life. So this asymmetrical tension between the activity of expressive life and the self-aware subject is also reflected in Kimura's formulations of culture and education. Kimura writes here now, Kultura, in its deep meaning, is to cultivate historical nature, that is, agricultura. Education is a branch of kultura in this sense, and in its essence, an attempt to cultivate human beings in particular. So from this account of Kimura, culture and education seems to be in harmony with nature. 
So we now we ask the same question to Nishida and Kimura. Can historical nature do harm to itself? So now we come back to Nishida's logic and five. So Kimura was really inspired by Nishida's concept of historical nature, but doesn't pay much attention to Nishida's argument about death in life in logic and life. So Nishida writes, health in its true sense includes illness, and life in its true sense includes death. Death is essential to life. Nishida also writes, life exists only where the phrase determines itself. So we now interpret that just as a place of absolute nothingness contains both being and nothingness, life in its true sense contains life and death, that is, creativity and destruction. So here we can find an element of destruction in Nishida, that is death. This duality of life, that is the creativity and destruction, life and death, is reflected on our human actions. Nishida writes, while we see ourselves as objects, we are always more than the objectified world. Here is our existence as a human being. Only does a human being know one's own death. Only can the human being commit suicide. So just as we produce knowledge of our own bodies, we produce knowledge of our own death. So we can say, while, see, while we see our own bodies as objects, we are always more than the body. Uh, similarly, we can say, we, while we see our own death as an object, but we are always more than the death. So here is a, an analogical way between the, uh, our own body and our own death. And death in itself is included in historical nature, but our knowledge of it enables us to act against nature and to commit suicide. So we can act destructively to nature because we can violate our own death against the creativity of historical nature. So our leading question is whether or not we can find in Nishida and Kimura's thinking clues for facing environmental problems. And we do find in Nishida's thinking an account for the human actions that are destructive to nature. Our exceeding self-knowledge enables us to violate our own death against the creativity of historical nature. And if we modify Kimura's concept of expressive life with Nishida's concept of life that includes death, the self-aware individual subject is responsible not only for responding to the token outer, but also for understanding the possibility of destruction that our actions can cause on the entire activity of expressive life. In addition, Nishida and Kimura's concept of environment suggests an alternative interpretation of environmental problems. In Nishida's case, environment in its true sense is a place from which we are born and to which we die, that is the world. So our knowledge about the environment after all our own death also belongs to our self-knowledge and waiting for our awakening. In Kimura's case, the environment is expressive outer that talks to the inner. So we are responsible for maintaining the asymmetrical tension with the activity of expressive life, now listening to more disharmony of the responses from the outer to our preceding responses. Thank you. Online, but why Jay Hesse would say that nature was initiated in Basho? So, so uh, your, your first question is about responsibility. So, 
also are uh, is at least two Japanese words correspond to it. So one is kotauru. So that's a kind of correlation. So the expressive author talks to the expressive subject and the subject uh, responds to the author. That Kimura uh, writes about the expression. So it's just responding to the, to the token author. It's one uh, meaning of response, but the other responsibility is second in. So that is uh, because the, uh, the human subject is self-aware to express an idea to the outer world. So, so here is Kimura's concept of responsibility uh, at second in. So I, so Nishida does not uh, write much about sekinin, so I t pick up that concept from Kimura especially. So that is uh, my answer to your first question. And the second question is about Heizik's uh, or argument about nature. So, uh, so uh, the, the article I cited here is about an inquiry into the good. So the Nishida's inquiry is really directed toward the absolute. Uh, so sometimes Nishida uses the word God. So the self is uh, opened to the God without any mediation. So Hajik argues that there must be the place of nature between the subject uh, ourselves and the absolute because, uh, because of this age of environmental problems. So, and, and yeah. So Nishida's ideas developed in, into later periods, but uh, Nishida's uh, primary concern is that true self and true self is, is not separated from the absolute. So, uh, so Hazik and Hazik's argument, uh, nature is a missing ratio between the self and the absolute. That is the point. So, I'm sorry, there are actually two more questions, but we've uh, run out of time for this uh, session. So, um, unfortunately, we have to close it at this point. So, uh, but thank, thank you again for uh, the excellent presentation. Thank you.